All right. Uh, the sell job is on. The president is now writing op-eds in newspapers around the country, and he's targeting New Hampshire and in Florida. For instance, the Concord Monitor, the president wrote that this agreement, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, reflects the realities of the 21st century economy, where global trade plays an increasingly central role. He goes on to write that, in fact, trade is a substantial driver of New Hampshire's economy. Over 20,000 American jobs are currently supported by goods exports from New Hampshire, with 32% made in New Hampshire goods exported shipped to TPP partners. He's getting down to the detail of what he thinks is going to be good. Are people going to buy it? Every labor union in this country is against the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and we got 90-day window to stop this. Only Congress can do it now if they say no to the deal. For more on this, let's turn to Leo Girard, president of International Steelworkers Union. Mr. Girard, always a pleasure. Good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Ed. This sell job, let me ask you about the unions first. Is there still this view by unions across this country collectively that the Trans-Pacific Partnership is not a good deal and you need to fight it? I think it's uh, unanimous, uh, the degree to which uh, not only the labor movement, but the uh, Democratic caucus, uh, progressives, whether they're environmentalists, anti-poverty groups, women's groups, any progressive group, it's virtually unanimous that this is a not only a bad deal, this is a terrible deal. Mm-hmm. And Ed, to be extremely uh, blunt about it, many of us are concerned that this could be the death knell over the short, medium, and long term of manufacturing in America. That is a, uh, a just a, a, a gut-wrenching statement. And it is true. We've seen one trade agreement after another gut jobs in this country, idle factories, turn middle class Americans back home with no work. It's it's horrible. I don't know why this president is all about it, this, quote, pivot to Asia. But this coalition that you're talking about sounds like it is growing. Now, the majority of Democrats in the House, the majority of Democrats in the Senate are against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yet the president continues to say things about it that uh, are simply not true. What do you make of this? How do you reverse this? Can it be done in 90 days? I, I think that uh, we've got to, and, and uh, I never thought I'd ever have to resort to this, we need to not only make every Democrat elected in the Congress understand that for us this is life or death on an industrial scale, and if they're going to vote and, and cast their vote in a way that's going to damage the long-term job prospects of industrial workers, then they ought not to be able to count on our support. And I don't mean that as a threat. I mean that as balancing the, 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 the agenda, that if you're prepared to vote for a deal that could uh, do away with jobs, do away with environmental standards, do away with equity issues, if you're prepared to vote for that, then we can't be prepared to vote for you. Let me just say, uh, Ed, line, line pipe. You, you know, related to the Keystone, just for the hell of it, a couple of thousand miles of uh, line pipe to move uh, goods, a couple of thousand miles of line pipe, 100,000 miles of line pipe in water systems and gas systems that need to be upgraded. 53% of the line pipe in, in America is now uh, by foreign imports, primarily China, India, Taiwan, uh, Malaysia, uh, and and those are countries that are now part of the TPP. And so then you bunch, bunch over to the rules of origin issue where they're saying that, and it's a very complicated, we haven't yet figured out all the nitty-gritty details, but anywhere between 35 and 45 percent, depending on the on the part, depending on the uh, the auto supply part, would be subject to a rule of origin that they'd have to be produced within the TPP countries. So let's, for the heck of it, call it 45%. Yeah. Although it's going to be much more complicated than that. Well, 45% of that could be made in Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, uh, Thailand, and and those countries uh, would be considered uh, regionally produced and be subject to no uh, duty. Well, what happens to the other... 55%, it can come from anywhere. Well, welcome China. 
So we've got line pipe, we've got auto parts, we've got uh, state-owned enterprises. There's not a thing that's been said publicly about state-owned enterprises. That means the Chinese or the any and the Vietnamese, the Chinese can bankroll the Vietnamese to come in and build a new facility, whether it's in Vietnam or in southern Alabama. Yeah, and put it at our disposal. Not a damn thing has been said about currency manipulation, and and I I heard from a very reliable source that Ford is aggressively aggressively anti the deal Ford Motor Company because of currency, but they've been invited by Treasury to come in and discuss uh, a side agreement on uh, the uh, currency manipulation. We all seen what the benefits of the side agreement were. When Bill Clinton gave us a side agreement on NAFTA, it isn't worth the paper it wasn't written on. <laughs> well, the, the bottom line here is that Ford has got to be concerned about the automobile parts industry and the ripple effect that it's going to have. And it's got to be worried about Japan manipulating its currency. Yeah, yeah. So these, these, are, these are fundamental economic things that drive right to the heart of quality jobs in this country. In a made in America, it sounds like it's just being trashed. How did the president get to this point, Leo? How did who brought him to this line of thinking that this pivot to Asia is going to be good? As as as, as good a relationship as I've had on every other issue with this administration, this just befuddles me. And 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 what I what what I've come to conclude is a number of things. First of all, these agreements aren't about trade; they're about investment opportunities. Yeah. And the State Department and the National Security Council want these trade deals so that these countries can become more reliable on America so that they will have uh, sort of in- input to homogenize the Pacific area outside of uh, China. Okay. And that's just, well, that's just a fool's errand. And you can back up. Why did we want a trade deal with Colombia? Well, we wanted a trade deal with Colombia because they, at that time they were concerned about Venezuela. Why did we want a trade deal of, with South Korea? Because they were concerned about North Korea. Why did we want a trade deal with Panama? Because they needed another place for people to launder money after all the baloney that went on in Switzerland and all the exposures. Uh, so these deals aren't about trade as we would think about it. They're about investment deals and national security continuing to give away, give away our jobs to have national security interests protected. And in the end, we've made China the strongest economy on the planet. We've had almost $11 trillion of accumulated trade debts with China and, and uh, Mexico since the passage of NAFTA and PNTR with China. Mm-hmm. This is only going to compound it. I mean, if you, if you couldn't get Guatemala after six years to be declared as not living up to their standards, Six years with a little country like Guatemala. What the hell do you think you're going to do with Brunei that practices Sharia law? Yeah. What are you going to do? With, or what are you going to do with Malaysia that uses forced child labor and slave labor? What are you going to do with Vietnam that 26 cents an hour is the average wage and they outlaw unions? I mean, who are you trying to kid here? That is amazing. Now, politically, Hillary Clinton has turned on this. At least she says what she knows about it. She is against it. Is this a big political score for those who oppose it? How do you view it? Well, I, I think what it is, it's, it's, it's an important uh, admission. Uh, now, it's, it's not a total repudiation. Yeah. It's uh, what I know up till now, I'm against it. And uh, what we need to do is have this deal killed. It, it, and uh, as uh, some have already said, including uh, you know, um, Congressman Levin, this deal shouldn't even be brought to the Congress. Yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work on every Democrat. We're going to hold some of them accountable. And to tell you the truth, I'm going to go talk to some Republicans because there's some Republicans that are very uncomfortable with this deal, and we need to tell them that so are we. Yeah. Leo Gerard, President, International Steelworkers, great to have you with us. Keep up the fight, my friend. Before-